Hello and welcome back to the Chamber of Virus. Now you may be asking, Tom, where is the Mystic Village? And I have a good answer for you. It is a long way to the east. We are just south of Spawn in a desert. The very big hole. Now I've cleared this hole for a very good reason. Um, we're going to be building a randomized maze. And for that I need space and I need sand because this is going to be a sand randomized maze. You'll see what I mean later, but for now we've cleared this area out. I have my maze planned. Um, our glass is going to go on this level for people to, to direct from above. It's going to be too high, very claustrophobic. And then the sand is going to be on this layer down here. As you can see from clearing it out, we've got a fair amount of sand. Uh, about two and a half chests worth. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and then this layer right here, this sandstone, is going to act as our solid base for us to make our redstone underneath and keep the sand from falling down into it. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I need to take this entire, it should be 61 by 61. I'm pretty sure that's right. I'll just double check. And that is indeed 61 by 61. Um, so now we've got this area, we need to line the sides and then we need to make space underneath for us to do all of our redstone work. Uh, so let's get going with that. And here we are. So that is the top section, all of the pillars between the rooms all placed in. And if we have a look underneath, let's get our little uh, pickaxe out. We can see the area to put all the redstone has been caverned out. It's took ages. I can't even stress how long this took. Um, it's all lit up, it's all good. We're going to be placing in our... Where, where's, I've lost the hole. There it is. Um, we're going to be placing in the redstone to make these doors go up and down um, under these segments here. So if the floor level's here, this is going to be one room and the maze is going to be a series of interconnected rooms. This right here uh, is going to be the spot where all of the sand drops down and gets pushed back up again. And I'm contemplating either doing that for every single one of these, and I'm not sure the redstone will fit if I do that, um, or a select few, or with this pre-planned route that I've got, I'll see how the moment takes me really. So yeah, uh, let's sort of jump ahead, I suppose. Uh, actually, you know what? First, I'm gonna explain how each of these doors is actually gonna work and how you can build your own. I think that looks just about right. So. We've jumped back onto my iris test world. You can see some of the buildings over here, just chilling about my uh, my circuitry testing and stuff like that, just going on over there. Um, this is what the door is gonna look like. And if I turn off the lever over here, this whole system will have an off switch. Uh, you'll see just there, our clock will trigger and it will drop the gate. And that doesn't happen every time. Uh, you'll notice it pull back and when it pulls across again, it has a chance of not activating. So that's gonna be the randomness of this maze. Um, let's turn that off again before it gets a bit too annoying. Ah, perfect. There we go. It's just a 3x4 area, 4x3 area. It's a very rudimentary double piston extender. Sticky piston on the bottom, normal piston on the top. In fact, we're going to shrink this down. Hopefully this shrinks down. Yeah, there we go. And then we're going to turn it off again. So there we go. That's what it's be like when the door, you can actually go through there. Uh, we're going to grab ourselves some building blocks and we're going to make our own over here. So if I extend this out a little bit. So that's the level that we're currently at with the uh, smooth sandstone in the other world, uh, which is going to extend the sand over here as it will be. And that is the block that's going to be missing. And then it is one, two, three, four blocks down from the top. You want to place your sticky piston and you want to grab a normal regular piston and place that on top. So that is our double piston extender and that's specifically for sand. I uh, can take out some of these from underneath. Uh, we're going to work on activating this real quick. So place a block up like this, a block down the side and grab ourselves a redstone torch from over here. That goes under there and this alone will activate the entire double piston extender. We're not looking for any sort of order for this because it's not a double sticky piston. Um, this redstone torch is powering that block there by a bud, and this block here uh, is being powered by the torch which powers this piston right here. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. We then uh, tower it down a little way. That turns it off. And then to turn this on, we basically need to turn that torch off. And the way we do that 
is we get ourselves this pattern here. Uh, we place a bit of redstone on there and we place a torch here. And although that isn't affecting this redstone right now, we're going to place a sticky piston on this block here. Nope, not like that. Facing in this direction. So if we power that, then let me just show you what will happen. It pushes across here. It lets this torch activate that redstone, which activates that torch, activates that one, and the whole thing extends. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, we're going to power this sticky piston right here via a... Let's get that down there. Via a mono stable and it's rising edge mono stable because we want to just get a tiniest tiniest signal into there because with this being a sticky piston we want we want it to work as a uh, a flip flop it's redstone t flip flop uh, so we give it a tiny tiny pulse out of here which we supply into it with some redstone here and going up to here and grab ourselves this and place it right there and that won't cut off the circuitry but it allows us to have a block just above we're going to run a comparator output from there and this is going to pull the signal from our randomizer it's going to pass it down to below through that block it's going to power this redstone which can power that go into this block which will also power this piston giving us the tiniest signal allowing this piston over here to push that out here and leave it there without pulling it back uh, you'll see how it works in a second so I'm going to grab myself a dropper and a hopper. I'm going to place the dropper just here and the hopper on its face. And in the hopper we want to place one redstone or one item that will stack up to 64 and one item that will not stack up to 64. A uh, reason for that is they give different amounts of output through a comparator. One redstone uh, or one item that will stack to 64 will give you one block of power, which is not enough to get across to this and start this whole loop and this whole segment here but one item that stacks on its own gives you a full signal out of the comparator uh, coming out powering both of these and then setting off that whole chain reaction um, and then it's just a case of triggering this so uh, we're going to grab ourselves some wool you always make sure all of your circuitry is always done on wool uh, it lets you easier see generally what's where it's good stuff um, Ed, bring that out here and um, we're going to, I suppose we can link it into the other system. Why not? So we'll link that into this system here. Grab some redstone. Bring it out along. That should be enough. There you go. And as you can see there, that has extended. We just need to fill up the gap now with some sand. And uh, we just let this thing do its job. This signal over here uh, is pulled from this redstone clock. Very simple thing. Just two hoppers facing into each other. One hopper empty, the other with however long you want your timer to be uh, pulling comparator outputs from both of these hoppers which get pulled up and power these sticky pistons uh, when they're powered they will push this block of redstone to the other side and it will release all the items from here into this side and the cycle will continue this redstone block is the actual output when it's on this side it gives you output and when it's not it doesn't pretty simple stuff you can turn it off with this if you constantly uh, power it with a stronger signal than this uh, then it will lock it in one position so you can unpower it and it will continue the clock we can see it there doing its job comes across here we should see this redstone lights up there we go worked like a charm so that's one door open one door closed of course uh, with the random chance you can see that that the the leggings got pulled through and that gave us a one signal so that swapped the doors with the random um, circuits every time you add an extra one it adds another half chance of something happening. It's like a coin flip, basically. Uh, and you can improve the odds by putting different items that stack up to 64 in here. Well, that actually reduces the odds, rather. So um, don't use redstone again. Use something else that will stack to 64. So I can use some white wool, and that will lower the chance of it getting a one output as opposed to a zero. And we can just leave that to continue. Or if we don't want to lag the world out, we turn it off. So back to me in the actual server where I've hopefully built a few of these in the uh, in our maze. And there we have it. That is the maze all laid out. You can see each of the doorways between these interconnecting rooms. Some of them are filled up. Some are open. There is only one way through this maze when it is turned off. 
when it's turned on, there can be between zero and four ways through. And oh, what does he mean by turned on? Well, if I head over here, I have cleverly disguised a lever behind this block right here. And if I were to flip that lever on, uh, let's head underneath and I can show you, then you will see all of this redstone over here. Each one of these is one of those segments I showed you earlier. And they are below certain blocks uh, with their randomizing switches all joined together with this red circuit here. And uh, they cause the floor to raise and lower basically at random intervals. Now you may notice some of the uh, some of these slabs on top. Now they're just to mark out where some of the mechanisms are underneath. Um, these particular ones are normally walls in the static maze. So I need to remember when I'm resetting the system, those ones need to be up when they're off effectively. Um, and of course, when the system's on, these can also become doorways to get through and cut shortcuts out the maze and sometimes even take you back on yourself. So yeah, that's all the redstone and all the basic building done. I need to light this thing up give it a roof and uh, possibly put some theming in there. And there it is complete. I am toying with the idea of keeping these half slabs on top just as a marker for myself and possibly if someone wants to try and use them to work out their way around, they can. I don't think they do give you that much of a good idea. So I might just leave them there. Um, of course, a maze wouldn't really be, uh, wouldn't really be christened unless someone had actually been round it and solved it, would it? And it would be kind of boring watching me go around it because I already know the route. I could just fly around the thing really quickly. What I need is a test subject. So I've called my good friend Delfron to come along and have a go if he thinks he's hard enough. Now, this is designed to be a two player maze. I don't expect anybody to get through it on their own, especially with it turned on. That would be absolutely mental. So uh, hopefully at some event in the future, I can have some people uh, come along and actually run around this in, in pairs and see who gets the best time. But for now, we're just going to see how quickly Delfron can get around the static maze without any assistance. Like, so here we are. you got to get from this side to the other, and I'm not going to turn it on because that's a little ridiculous. Wait, no, you have to explain it to me because this is my first clip here. Okay, right. So um, <laughs> this maze at the moment is off. You will not find out what it's like when it's on because you need more than two people to do that. Okay. Um, you have to just get through it. Get through the entire maze? Yeah, yeah. Are the out location me? is the opposite side. You can use these blocks to get round. If you get really stuck, sure. But I want to see how long it takes you. time i don't know you'll find out afterwards because oh. I'm, I'm not keeping track um editing me will post that it. was hard but it was possible in an episode length yeah um and when it turns on everywhere that there's one of these right the the wall has a chance of dropping away oh okay there's All there's right. 46 um Pistons underneath. You should put um dispensers over here so when you come out, fireworks and stuff go off. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. No, you will, you will do that. I could do that. And so there we have it for another episode. This time we didn't too, do too much progress on any of the mods, but we did get this maze built. I've got plans for what I want to do extending on from this. I want to turn this into a big quest experience for the whole server, basically. Um, but we'll have to wait until future episodes for that. Don't forget, leave your names in the comment section to be added to the subscriber dungeon. Uh, that's all going to be dealt with in the next episode. I'm not going to do it right now. So you've got one more chance to add uh, your name to the list and get yourself a chance to be added. So thank you for watching. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, everything, all the things. Click on all of the buttons below and I will see you in the next episode of Chamber of Iris.